い Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at a 2.5D action side scroller action romp into a bit of history between Taiwan and Japan with The Legend of Tian Ding. The game was inspired by events in Taiwan during the Japanese occupation as they would fight for Taiwanese people against their ruthless rulers. The Legend of Tian Ding was developed by Creative Games Computer Graphics Corporation and released by Nian Doctrine in 2021 for PC, and later released on Game Pass and the Xbox Series X and S, along with PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch. The story revolves around a Robin Hood type of character who steals from the rich and gives back to the poor. The main character, Liao Tian Ding, is known across Taiwan as a legendary hero who fights against Japanese. As he takes down anyone against the people, his journey takes him in defeating a Japanese war criminal uh, general, making new friends, learning new moves, and just trying to help anyone and everyone. The story has him move through sewers, basements, trains, and caves in attempts to free and help others. Many of the cutscenes are told through comic book panels that are drawn very nicely with the overall look of the game going for that type of design. The writing here is really your standard affair. Everyone gets to the point and really no levity of any of the conversations are in there. I would never be too engaged until the very end of the game where the story gets stronger with the game culminating into its resolve. The gameplay here is probably the best part of the game with lengthy dungeon type maps as Tian Ding will use all that he has at his disposal to proceed. You will learn many different move sets in combat that you will use to jump higher, jump farther, and to fight your opponent with much more precise offensive attacks. The controls respond quite well and the tutorial helps you throughout the game in how to use the moves acquired to your advantage against the enemy and the level design. My biggest con here is that you are not able to attack while in your crouch position. That just doesn't make sense to me and may be less cautious when fighting. They do give you a dodge button to help you avoid major damage to almost anything that is thrown at you and is an absolute must when you have harder bosses to contest with and with traps laid out in the maps. There are minor puzzles that are used in a level design as they require the player to think on their toes on how they proceed, whether it is a double jump using a lasso or to use other moves to proceed and avoid death. None are too outrageous to get past, but they need precision at times with a controller to make it through that was very frustrating at me for maybe a minute or two. By far, nothing that would make you lose your mind at all. There are many side quests and games that you have the option to do to increase your money and to improve your stats of your character. The side quests feel more like fetch quests, like finding a lost hat or to gambling with others that you can do. I never really felt the need to do this until the game got much harder and I was woefully overmatched when I started to get towards the harder bosses in the game. <laughs> Oh, 
こで死ねえっと今回はこの映画の感想を But it doesn't push 2D expectations any more than any other games in the same genre. My biggest con here is the pacing of the game. They tried to put so much into the writing and story that they lost me in the game many times, especially after a boss fight. As an example, after the first boss fight, I would transverse the story and would take roughly about 15 to 20 minutes or more before I would start a new level, with the combat being extremely fun. Where you can experiment with a lot of your moves, it takes you straight out of the game with so much side tasks just for the story that never really needed to be there that I think was implemented just to make the game longer. The action portion is about three to maybe three and a half hours in length, where the story pushed the rest to five hours or more for the main campaign. Overall, a really fun, nice, visually animated side scrolling action game that suffers with a useless side quest just to buff your characters and stats for the final boss and a lengthy story fetch quest that take you totally out of the game. The Legend of Tian Ding gets a 6.75 out of 10 for its nice action gameplay, bogged down by non interesting fetch quests and side quests that will have you completing the game in two sittings at the most. That's it for this look at The Legend of Tian Ding. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. Damn.